books, books, and more books. In our villa, there must be ten times more than even here. Mummy and Daddy. They are the epitome of wealth and elegance. But pain pays no heed to money and style. The only way people could tell Martha and me apart was by dressing differently. Even Mother couldn't tell us apart. This painter was a friend of Grandpa's. I always loved his paintings. As a child, I used to look at them for hours. A telegraph box. I know how to use it. Daddy taught me. There's no reason to use the phone right now. July 17th, 1944. Our family is deeply saddened and is thinking of you during this extremely difficult time. Ernesto E. and family. July 17th, 1944. Our hearts are with you and we share your grief in the wake of the tragic loss of your dearest Julia. Monsignor Attilio D. July 17th, 1944, Ministry of War. Director General for Conscripts and NCOs. We are grieving over your sudden loss and we send you our heartfelt condolences. The Lieutenant Colonel Rapporteur. An old painting. I find it so sad. It communicates a sense of deep solitude to me. I can't turn it off. We have to listen to the radio all of the time. Any news and announcements can be vital. Daddy's canes. They are so beautiful, but I can't say why, but they have always scared me. That's not possible. It must be this whole situation making me see things that don't exist. Daddy must be devastated. He loves me. I messed up and now I have to watch him suffer my death. I can at least light the candles and let him find some comfort in sleep. Daddy Zobo. We were preparing a really nice duet together. On the rare occasions he's at home, that is. These hunting rifles are not daddy's. He never went hunting. Nanny must have left them here. Daddy, mummy, and my grandparents. It seems almost impossible that father is a soldier. Mother would have been more suitable if she wasn't a woman.
done, can you come and get the flowers, please? Or send Martha if you like. <sighs> Never a moment's peace. Even at a time like this, she can't sit still for a second. <laughs> Everything always has to be perfect with her. Parla Londra. Trasmettiamo alcuni messaggi speciali. Felice non è felice. È cessata la pioggia. La mia barba è bionda. Parla Londra. Abbiamo trasmesso alcuni messaggi speciali. What's happening? Who closed the door? Irish, Irish, wake up. Do you think it's appropriate to sleep here, of all places? What? Hmm? Yes. I must have fallen asleep. What are they talking about? You can't stay here forever. Why don't you go to bed? No, no. I want to stay with my daughter. Your daughter? Your daughter? You have another daughter, you know. The one who's still alive. Remember? What are you talking about, Irena? Julia is dead. What kind of comment is that? How can you? You should be thinking about Martha. Julia harmed Martha. You know that, right? And as if that were not enough, she has now also abandoned her. It's the same old story. Everything is always Julia's fault, isn't it? Her fault for Marta being deaf and for you being infertile. Do you think it's the right time for this? Julia is dead, Irena. Dead. Someone killed her. Do you realize that? Of course I realize. I get it. Do you think I'm stupid? No one understands it better than me. She always brought problems. Only problems. It would have been better if she hadn't been born at all. They have done this to get at me, yes. Your death is all my fault. All I could ever do for you was hurt you, Yuli. My poor, sweet, crazy girl. What will I do without you? What will life be like now? All the time I didn't spend with you. But now I'm home. We can go fishing together. We can take pictures of butterflies. No. We can't do anything together anymore, can we? Nothing. I miss you, Julia. I miss you. While American bombings continue to devastate the peaceful towns within the Elsa Valley, we have heard some tragic news from the area of La Ramola. The young daughter of German Army General Erich K. was murdered near her home. What possible reason could there have been behind such a cowardly act? This is what the Carabinieri, who immediately intervened, hoped to find out.
Mother didn't seem to suffer from the situation. All she cared about was that my death was so painful for Martha, but not having me around anymore must have been a great relief to her. At the end of the day, it was better for everyone that it was me who died, and it was better for me too that people thought that. But the guilt began to consume me. That's when I started having horrible nightmares.
It was just a dream. A horrible dream. That horrendous woman and the face of my sister. I wish all of this was a dream and my sister is just sleeping in her bed. Instead, her bed is empty and this is reality. This is Martha and me at the festival of the patron saint. It was only a few months ago, and now... Martha had asked for a picture of me to put in this frame. She wanted me to do one of those expressions of mine that made her laugh. Expressions that she couldn't quite imitate. She used to say that those were the signs of my soul. Can a photo capture the soul? Can I capture Martha's soul? Scary fairy tales. Everything seems to be scary lately. Yet everything here is so beautiful and bright. This is Martha's trinket box. It could contain something that will help to figure out what happened. Our beautiful home. In spite of everything, I prefer being here. I always keep my trinket box locked. Oh gosh, if Mummy sees this picture, she'll throw it away for sure. It's me and Lapo. I have the butterfly collection that Daddy made for me. Nanny will be visiting me soon. Can I be Martha without her clothes? Mummy never wanted us to swap, so I don't know how she will take it. I could wear Martha's clothes instead, in the other wardrobe. I'm already dressed. It's me with the nanny. Or maybe it was Martha. No one can remember. Everything I need is always in my bag. Before I leave the room, I should probably take a good look around. Key to my trinket box. Here is my diary. July 12th, 1944. This is a new diary. We moved here today and I forgot my old one back at home. But that's okay. A new chapter in my life, a new diary. They say they brought us here for our own safety. Daddy, the war, and everything else. Nanny gave us her house and she went to look after the mansion. It's weird being back here after so many years. I remember Nanny telling me the fairy tale of the Lady of the Lake. It's one of the few happy memories I have from when I was little. 
Nanny isn't here and that's a shame, but Martha is here with me. I also get to see Lafo more often, which is wonderful. He's always hanging around here. Mum is thankfully too preoccupied with fixing up the house to worry about me. At least for now. July 16th, 1944. There's something creepy about the woods. Every time I'm at the lake, I get a strange feeling. Maybe it's the legend of the white lady playing tricks on me. I get weird ideas. I think that there is this presence. Then I think I'm just being crazy. Anyway, crazy or not, I want to take some pictures. I'm not scared. In fact, I'd say I'm excited. I've made arrangements with Martha. She's coming to the lake with me tomorrow to set up two new cameras with timers, and we'll see what we can photograph. Not before a good swim, of course. To be honest, Martha doesn't like photography all that much, and recently she's gone off swimming too. But she does like spending time with me by teasing me. Then, when she gets bored, she disappears into her books, and I do my own thing. We feel right when we're together. July 16th, 19... to call Martha down for breakfast. Fine, but I'm not sure we should let her sleep all day. What do you think? What did you say? This is not the right key. I must okay, get her okay, key if I, I want to know what's up. inside her trinket her box. Light. So when she wakes up, she'll know when to come down for breakfast. They really think I'm Martha and I can't hear them. I need to be careful not to talk or I will be in serious trouble. I'm already dressed. It's July 18th. How wonderful the snow is. Unfortunately, it doesn't snow often around here. It's locked. Strange. Why did they lock my room? Martha's breakfast is ready. We can go. Yes, yes. It's getting late. Did you leave the newspaper for Martha? You know how much she likes reading it. Yes, Irena. It's on the table, can't you see? And that camera? Are you leaving it there? Yes, Irena. Can't you leave it there for a few more days? Do you mind? It was for Yulia. I will take it away soon. I, I promise. The thought makes me so sad. Seeing it there is as if... I don't know how to explain it. All right, all right, all right. But let's go now. We have too much to do. We can't stay here all day talking. Mummy is right, though. Martha always read everything. It's me who will now read the newspaper instead. They'll be out all day. The funeral preparations will take them a long time. Everything is more complex with the war. Over the next few days, I will see little to nothing of them. Bread, butter, jam, and coffee. 
Martha's typical breakfast. I prefer honey and milk, but I'll have to adapt to her tastes, obviously. For Julia, to take more and more photos, Dad. I can verify that the camera is still working by taking a photo. I could photograph the sparrow. There are so many of them out here. There might be birds around the little wall in front of the house. I always put crumbs on it for them. <laughs> 